Welcome back everyone to another video on Nomad. This is a follow-up to my definitive guide to Nomad in 2020 and it'll cover top five tips of things I've learned as well as things that have changed in the game since that video was released. And I guess this would be a perfect time to make this video since the Nomad Wars tournament hosted by Paradox is just around the corner. Starts in October all throughout the month of October. Timestamps for each of the tips will be in the description if you want to check them out now and skip around between what you think you need the most help with. The first tip is on dock placement. As I said in the previous video, you want to put it in the corner, but now you also want to put it next to a shorefish. The reason is that this villager can drop off the shorefish at the dock, but it's not only the shorefish. These deer, as well as this sheep or goose in this case, can also be dropped off when you make sure the villager is a fisherman so as long as the villager returns to their role as a fisherman they can drop it off as well so normally I'd use a, this villager to build a house but I want to demonstrate this instead so she's fishing she's fishing oh you know what I'm gonna be running out of fish before I want to send the villager back or before I have another wood enough wood to build another dock in my build order so she's a hunter now if you try to drop off she, she just tries to go around but if you click that you can still see she has the six food and you can drop it off and go back so it involves a little bit more micro for your macro, a little bit more time investment into making sure she doesn't accidentally walk all the way back to the town center to drop off this food because you have to manually task your back to the uh, fish in order to drop it off. Another thing I like to do with this villager, like a, neck, a second part of the, the first tip here, is to have her be the house building villager. Sometimes you want to send out a villager to explore around your TC um, to go find those boars and they'll be building the houses but I find that since the shore fish is going to expire before I'm generally ready to build that second dock with the villager this will be the villager who's building the houses so tip number three is about scouting so here we are in the mid feudal age I'm attacking on water uh, this is just a scenario I built real quickly in the scenario editor to exemplify uh, mid feudal age so that's why all these villagers are inactive at the moment but um, what I want to do for scouting, once I, in mid-feudal, I'm trying to figure out what my strategy is going to be for Castle Age, is to make a Spearman. So the Spearman is good because it comes from the barracks, not the Archery Ranger stable. It doesn't really reveal your strategy. You're probably going to be building a barracks anyways as a prerequisite for your stable or Archery Range. I guess as Khmer, it gives away a little bit that you're uh, using, using a barracks. Maybe you'll go for Pike Siege Attack or something like that. But the good thing about the Spearman is it's fairly good line of sight. It's a little bit faster than just scouting with a villager. And here I'm against the Spanish. So what I'm looking for is if my opponent is on stone and if he's going to try to castle drop me. And that goes into the fourth tip as well, which is how to defend against a castle drop. So I see he's got blacksmith and market, uh, but he also has a stable. So it could be a mix of... Um, stable units and conquistadors or maybe he's just trying to get husbandry and bloodlines and now I see his mining camp on the stone um, so I am going to be expecting um, conquistadors so the first thing you want to do here is wall up and go figure out what your unit's going to be to defend against conquistadors you probably can't stop the castle from being built at this point in the game so yeah that's that's your best bet so now i'm going to bring the spearman back and scout out where i want to wall what's going to be the most effective area to wall the big thing here is to make sure that the castle won't be in range of my town center so my villagers can stay active while i build up defense i'm buying time so that the power spike of the conquistadors doesn't hit me uh like a mangonel so we're going to keep scouting towards our base figure out we're going to wall and we're going to send out a lot of villagers to wall. We're even going to delete this house because it's not quite far enough forward. Um, not sure where this guy's going. So we'll start walling here because we know that's important. And don't be afraid to um, stonewall as well. You know, those stonewalls are going to take a little bit longer for the conquistadors to break through. And um, that's really what you need to do is buy time. The conquistadors have bonus damage against uh, buildings so those palisade walls aren't going to be doing enough so if you get into this situation you might just have a vil fight um, you just kind of have to keep sending villagers and maybe this is the point where you add your stable and realize okay my opponent is uh is committing a bit here he's committing to a ford castle if i can kill some of these villagers i might be in a pretty good position you can just wall off their opponent from getting any reinforcements 
and uh, send the villagers to uh, to take the fight. So now I am up to Castle Age, and I'm going to be going for cavalry units instead of skirmishers. The reason for that is skirmishers do get bonus damage against conquistadors, but I want to make sure that my skirmishers actually have a use after I defend against the conquistadors. It's fairly easy for the Spanish player to just add a siege workshop, a few mangonels, and really decimate your economy. Um, or sorry, you decimate your skirmishers afterwards. So I'm going to be making knights and then maybe add skirmishers later. If you're an archery civilization, skirmishers might make more sense because those upgrades you're investing into the skirmishers will be useful for your other archery range units or archer type units later. Um, but for Khmer, I kind of have an even even shot between archery range units and cavalry units. If you want a good example of how this works, in the finals of Sabaro, a tournament I hosted over a year ago, we had Kamigawa versus Dragonstar, and Kamigawa was playing Malians on Cross and defended against Dragonstar's Spanish aggression with Conquistadors. So Cross isn't quite the same as Nomad, but it's a hybrid map, and it gives a very instructional view on what a good defense could look like. Link for that is in the description. For tip number five, let's take a look at the new civilizations and the civilizations that have had updates since my previous Nomad video and see how they play out in the Nomad meta. So first in alphabetical order, we have Bohemians. Bohemians don't have anything that really stands out for Nomad play. The cheaper Monastery Blacksmith University can be useful for some quick aggression on Nomad. Blacksmith can be good for going up to Castle Age a little bit faster, but the mining camp Technologies free can be useful as well if you don't want to drop a mining camp just to get the technologies. But other than that, there isn't anything that's outstanding for early nomad aggression or nomad play in general. Next we have the Burgundians. I see the Burgundians as having quite a bit of potential on nomad for a specific strategy. The fast castle into cavalier shows a lot of potential because of the economic upgrades. I would advise getting the Lumber Camp quite early in Dark Age, getting the Double Bit Axe upgrade while you're still in Dark Age, and then on your way up to Castle Age, you can also get Bow Saw, so you get that a little bit earlier as well. The cheaper food cost is also very helpful on Nomad, since you're generally struggling for food in the early ports of the game. Next up we have Cumans. Cumans got a change so that they're not terrible anymore on hybrid maps. The additional Town Center in Feudal Age isn't that great in hybrid maps because generally players are going to be having a fish boom on top of their town center production so an extra town center in feudal age kind of trades even if not worse than a fish boom from the docks but now the cumans get cheaper archery ranges and stables cheaper by 100 wood so it makes them a little bit more competitive in hybrid maps although still not the best Next up we have Koreans. The big change to Koreans is that they now get Archer Armor upgrades free. This makes their fast castle into castle drop into war wagons incredibly scary. War wagons now are the closest thing you can get to a tank in Age of Empires 2. There's been slight changes to the top three on Nomad. Lithuanians still get their starting 150 food, but now do not get Blast Furnace in Imperial Age, so it makes their Imperial play a little bit less incredible. Malians do not get free gold mining. Their gold mines now last 30% longer instead. It's not a huge change, but it's definitely a little bit of a nerf. And Persians no longer get faster working town centers in the Dark Age. So that makes their docks and town centers a little bit slower as well. So the top three got bumped back down a little bit, but it's not huge changes. I would still consider them the top three. Next we have the Poles. There's nothing that really stands out for the Poles on Nomad. Their villagers regenerating HP could potentially be useful in a vil fight scenario, but I really advise against vil fighting if at all possible. Work on your quick walls and try to just get your town center or dock up as quickly as possible instead of fighting. And last we have Sicilians. Sicilians start with an extra 100 stone. This can be useful to build both a donjon and a town center come castle age, or you can get up to castle age even faster by selling that stone at the market maybe giving you an even stronger night rush. Castles and town centers are built 100% faster, except for that first town center. You're going to build it just as slowly as everyone else. The other upgrades are not especially important for Nomad, except for their team bonus, where the first transport ship is free. So let's take a look at how that applies. 
So now I have a transport ship whose cost is free. So you can see the creation time is just about two seconds and I can use it to scout around the map to pick up sheep. I would recommend scouting towards your town center first. That way you're gonna get sheep that are along the shore and you can redirect them towards your town center for extra scouting. You'll be able to find your opponent's dock and their fishing ships and know exactly where to start your water attack come feudal age. Hopefully these tips have been helpful. If you want to see more Nomad, I will be playing in the Nomad Wars tournament hosted by Paradox throughout the month of October. Those will be live on Twitch and I will also send them to YouTube after the fact. See you in the next one.